You're watching the candidates reaching you live from Enugu State, Nigeria. And let's meet our next guest. Frank Wicked Jr. is a 58-year-old year Nigerian politician who has served in different capacities as a public office holder. Between 2004 and 2005, he served as Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Special Duties, and Youth Development. Between June 2005 and, 2000 and January 2007, he was Minister for Information and National Orientation. Between January and May 2007, he served as Minister for Information and Communication. He was also the Director General of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group between 2009 and 2014. Mr. Frank Nemeka Nweke Jr. is the candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, Thank you so much. You've been Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria three times. Why do you want to be governor now? Well, first of all, I'd like to... You know, I would have preferred to stand while addressing in the Enugu. <laughs> well, Can I stand? No, for broadcast purposes, it would be great <laughs> to right. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you so much. But first of all, I'd like to um, say what a great honor it is to have the opportunity to interact with Ndi Enugu, um, to present myself for this job interview, because that's really what it is. I'm applying to be governor of Enugu State, and I'm honored that the people of Enugu State have assembled tonight um, to uh, engage with me and allow me to... Um, discuss my manifesto and my agenda for government. I would also like to thank the organizers of this um, town hall series for their commitment to promoting uh, democracy, for their commitment to um, really encouraging citizen you know, participation in the political process, and, as, uh, and then for their commitment to actually um, political discourse, political Um, as citizens, we can take back our states. As citizens, we can take back our constituencies. And as citizens, we can take back our country. Right. So thank you so much. Now to your question, why do I want to be governor? And I'd like to say very, very seriously, very solemnly, that I am the beneficiary of what I describe as the best nurture a child could have. I'm also the beneficiary of the best education a child could get. I've also had the privilege of participating in the I've gained significant experience. I've gained significant knowledge over a 20-year period. And so when you are a minister or when you are an appointee, it is different from being the chief executive of a state. But I'd like to say that in spite of the nurture that I've had, in spite of the education that I've had, in spite of the exposure that one has had, I am embarrassed. I am ashamed that Nigeria is what it is today. In spite of the presence of people like me, I'm ashamed that Enugu State is in the condition in which it is today. And these are the factors that really encourage me to say, you know what? Step forward. You are indebted to the people of Enugu. You are indebted to Nigeria. It is this debt I like to pay. It is my inability to continue to stomach the level of deterioration in governance, that is the reason why I have stepped okay. forward. And so what then is your value proposition to the people of the states? What do they stand to gain by having you steer the affairs of this state for the next four years? Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Chika. First of all, I believe that I'm bringing significant knowledge, significant experience. I'm bringing a culture of integrity, I'm bringing a culture of accountability to government. I'm also bringing a culture of openness and transparency to government. If we look at what is happening in our state today, very, very few people understand what is going on. When you look at our state's budget, it is so opaque. It is so, it's, it's usually implemented in the breach rather than you know, a, a full implementation. When you look at the conditions other which our people live today, the water crisis, the state of our road infrastructure, this level of insecurity, this, the condition of our pensioners, the condition of, of, of civil servants even today, the fact that you have retirees who have to bribe their colleagues to pay their gratuities, it is unacceptable. The state of our young people, all of these things are unacceptable. And I believe that with one's knowledge, with one's exposure, and the level of preparedness that I've had over the last 20 years in public service, with my education and with my exposure, I believe that I am more than prepared 
to provide the leadership needed to transform our state at this time. I am going to be in charge of my government. I am going to lead from the front. Under no circumstance, no conditions will make me leave my state to go on a dancing uh, a trip around the state, around the, around the country. I will lead from the front okay. because that is what you've been elected to do. This is the mandate you have to protect the people, to really encourage improvements uh, in, the, in, their, in, their, so, in their life, in their livelihoods and the rest of them. So what sectors of development in the states are priority for you? Very clear. Now, I'm going to say something that will surprise you. I am very big on leadership. I'm so big on leadership because everything rises and falls on leadership. That is the right thing. No matter what plans you have for the youth sector, no matter what plans you have for the water sector, no matter what plans you have for the security sector, if you don't have the capacity, the leadership capacity, if you don't have the personal discipline, you can be sure that nothing is going to work. And so leadership is key for me. Just le providing leadership, principled, strong, disciplined, accountable leadership is key for me. The second thing I want to talk about is the issue of security of lives and property. A situation where our people are being massacred literally. This is not what Enugu is known for. A situation where our people cannot sleep with two eyes closed. There's no responsible government who should not pay attention to the matter of uh, security. So that's number two. The third thing I want to talk about is the water situation in our state. During the rainy season, I don't know about you, do you live in Enugu? Yeah, I come back. You do live in Enugu. So you're probably familiar with what I'm saying. But where I live, in what is supposed to be one of the best parts of town, I have to pay to get water. I have to pay during the rainy season about 20, 25,000 naira per tanker of water. In this dry season, it's going up to about 30,000 to 35,000 because the water bodies have shrunk further because of the cost of diesel. Now think about this is me and I'm, I'm sweating about it. And I'm not joking. I'm not trying to be nice here. I'm sweating because you need about two to three tankers a month. Now think about the ordinary people who have to buy in gallons and jerry cans. Think about the health impact. Think about the economic impact. So water is priority for me. The, the, third thing that, uh, the, the fourth thing that is of top priority is our economy, the state of our economy, right, today. Today, Enugu State is the 20th most indebted state in Nigeria. Enugu State is indebted to the tune of about 70 billion naira, domestic debt. Enugu State is indebted to the tune of $125 million US. And let me tell you what else. This domestic debt jumped 82% over the last five years. And when you look at these borrowings, the next thing then is, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with borrowing money, but what you do with the money is even more critical. And so look at the state of our infrastructure, look at the state of our water sector, look at the state of our health sector, look at our security sector, look at the housing sector, and tell me that indeed these borrowings have been justified. So I will pay attention to the matter of economic transformation. I'm going to pay great attention to issues of technology, I'm going to pay attention to issues of environmental sustainability. And on that is environmental sustainability. It is about availability of water. It is about sanitation. Look at the state of Enugu. So about the water situation, what exactly is your strategy for addressing it? Because you seem to understand what the problem is. So where does your strategy come in? Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent question, Chika. My primary strategy is to unbundle, unbundle the water sector. What do I mean by this? Currently, you have the water corporation. And I want to say categorically that it is a cesspit of corruption. You probably have some of the most incompetent human beings that were created by God in that corporation today. Now, for your information, for your information, if you take the entire water infrastructure in the output from the entire water infrastructure in Enugu is not more than 12 percent. Are you hearing me? The entire water infrastructure, take it as 100 percent. The output from that entire infrastructure is not more than 12 percent. 
And this is based on, on an audit that was conducted by the Federal Ministry of Water Resources in 2020. What this what means is that you have the water infrastructure, you have water, but water is not flowing in the city. As I'm talking to you now, go to OG Water Works tomorrow morning. You're going to find that about 50,000 cubic meters of water is wasting every day. Why? Because of the cannibalization of the water pumps there. If you enter the engine room of Oji Water Works, Igechen in on a tinka in coal camp. They were installed in 2005. Only one is working. What it then means is that the water being harvested, freely given to us by God from the ground, is not is wasting now. Yes, the pumps bring it, but it is wasting because. When I say I'm going to unbundle it, I will tell you how. I'm going to break the water value chain into three. We will have whose duty it will be to harness water. Their job, the only job they have is to take this water out of the ground. Whatever, wherever you want to get the electricity to bring the water out is entirely your business. But the contract that we're going to have with you is bring the water out of the ground. Nothing more, nothing less. That is number one. The second thing that they must, the, 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 the next group of people must do, another company independently must do, is to transport the water using the main trunk lines. You have major trunk lines that bring water from OG and Ajali to what you call reservoirs. These reservoirs are the foot of Milking Hill. You have them in, uh, in uh, Ibagua, you have them in uh, Tinka, you have some of them in Idor River area. So they take the trunk, uh, the water in the trunks, and then move them, move the water into the reservoirs. That will be the job of an independent company, independent of the first one. The third, but not the least, is another company whose duty it is to do what? To distribute. You take the water from the reservoirs, and now distribute to the various parts of Enugu. And it is your responsibility to meter the various homes and make sure that water is supplied and that water is uh, paid for. Okay. So Once this is done, as a leader, as a leader, what you do is to ensure through an independent regulatory agency, which is what the Water Corporation will become, to ensure that these independent companies are fulfilling their obligations to government and to the people of Enugu. Once we do this, corruption Ghana, okay. it will go. So at this point, at, at, at this point I, I, I also want to ask that if you have questions in the hall, uh, please raise your hand and we will bring a mic to you immediately. We will start with a lady this time around. Um, is there a lady? There's a lady here, please. We, we started with men twice before, so let's start with a lady now. Um, please bring the mic. There's a lady here putting on a black gown. Let's begin with her. Uh, don't forget to give us your name. Please tell us your name and be very brief about your question. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Joy Lonenia. Now, my question is employment in Enugu. Once I'm done with school, I'm leaving Enugu. So what's the plan to provide employment for young people in Enugu? Thank you. All right, so let's begin with that. What is your plan for providing employment in the States? What did you say your name is, ma'am? Nenya. Very well. So please don't leave Enugu. Please. We want you here. And I say this very seriously. But I do understand that man by nature will tow the path of least resistance. That is a natural disposition of every man. Everyone wants to make progress. You want to have a good life. You want to have a purposeful life. You want to achieve your potential. And so we cannot in good conscience say do not leave if the living conditions are inadequate, if there is insecurity, if there is no water, if the infrastructure is not there, if there are no jobs. Now, but why are there no jobs in Enugu? Why is it that in the last seven years, there's been no investments, there's been no fresh investments in Enugu? I would explain to you, it is for the same reasons why you're having a difficult life. It's because of the insecurity. It's because of the, uh, the poor uh, infrastructure. 
It is because of the of the of the of the uh, uh, malfeasance, the poor policy environment. It is almost like a deliberate and conscious effort by government to make sure that businesses do not come to Enugu. And in our who does a thing like that? Money will only go to where it is needed, where it is safe, where it is protect, uh, protected, where it is going to receive, where it is going to get returns. Today, people are asked for bribes in order for them to bring businesses to Enugu. Muabu Frank Mweke, as your governor, no such thing will ever happen. My background as former director general of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group forbids it. We understand the set of uh, um, uh, the, the set of policies, the set, the 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 the, the features of uh, any environment that wants to attract business. And what are these? I will explain to you. Once the businesses are assured that their investments will be protected, they will come to Enugu. Once businesses are assured that they do not have to offer bribes to anyone, they will come. Once businesses are aware that there will be no multiple taxation, they will come. Okay. Once businesses know so, that government will be consistent with its policies, they will you, come. You have another question we here. We will provide these circumstances for businesses to come, and it is those businesses that will create the jobs to keep people like you in Enugu. So you have and a this question is my here. assurance this is, to the people of Enugu. This says, what are your plans on environment and waste management? Say that again. What are your plans for environment and waste management? Okay. Well, thank you again for excellent question, whosoever asked it. Um, it is unfortunate the situation in which we have found ourselves. From a state which was probably next to Calabar in terms of cleanliness in terms of sanitation, look at where we have found ourselves today, as probably one of the filthiest states in Nigeria. Um, a state that was, that was uh, named one of the 100 resilient cities in the world just a few short seven years ago, that, that, that um, uh, uh, characterization has been lost completely because all the circumstances that enabled us to be so nominated, and able to stay to be so nominated, have disappeared. And so, for environment specifically, I'm going to start with, first of all, appointing credible, knowledgeable, and uh, a capacitated leadership for SWAMA, the State Waste Management Agency. This, in this state, we had street sweepers, mechanized street sweep, uh, sweepers. We had a very well articulated waste management system. We had a waste transfer system. We even, well, the government was already contemplating a sorting uh, system through which there will now be recycling. All of these opportunities have been lost. So my agenda for development, my manifesto, is very clear on the various steps that will be taken to restore these services in place. That's number one. Number two is the matter of environmental sustainability. I don't know how many of you really have taken note of how hot Enugu is becoming over the last couple of years. Not many people are paying attention. When you talk about climate change, there is the tendency to believe that non Ocha, it is those white people, leave them, they are the ones doing it. Yes, they may be doing what they are doing, but we're also doing what we're doing. I want you to look as you're driving through various local governments. You're going to find piles of trees felled and being sold as firewood. There is a significant deforestation that is taking place in, our st in, in Enugu State. All of these things are affecting the environment. All of these things are going to really affect the quality of life. All of these things we must check. And I believe that the people who are doing these things are doing it because they do not know better. And so under my government, the issue of environmental sustainability in every sense of the word okay. will be taken very, very seriously. All right, let's take another question in the audience. Uh, please, there is a, there's another gentleman there, um, please. Let's pass the microphone to him. Good evening. My name is uh, Dele Maxwell Uguay. I understand what you are saying, but I have one problem. Your policies seem to be urban-centered. When you talk of water, Enugu, 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 does it mean people in Osuka, Agbani, Oji River do not need or do not need to be to have access to portable water. Okay. We have to look at that. All right. So thank you. Other, the essence of what I'm saying is that 
By that you want to develop Enugu town. You pile prayer on Enugu, just as you want to leave Enugu to our Lagos. Other people will be leaving the rural areas to Enugu too. All right, we have thank to you. make rural areas thank you very livable much. too. Let's keep our questions very brief. All right, thank let's you. answer that um, first. Thank you. Excellent. That's a very excellent question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, let me, I'm going to digress a bit. Apart from the fact that, I don't know if you know about the Adada water scheme. That water scheme, you know that Adada River was dammed specifically for the purpose of providing water to Nsuka and the environ. So why is it that since that project was completed, the damming was, was completed almost uh, uh, three, four years ago, the state government has not fulfilled its own part of the deal. Its own part of the deal was to take the water from the dam when it's been completed and uh, 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 create the trunk lines and reticulation uh, uh, infrastructure for the, envi for the city of uh, Nsuka and the environs. I am aware of this. Now, I, I believe, in fact, based on what you've just uh, uh, said, I'm going to endeavor to really uh, be more expansive in my explanations. So it's not as though the rural areas, uh, one is forgetting. Let me also use this opportunity to say that there are significant, opportun there are significant opportunities to actually ex improve, expand the water infrastructure in Enugu. There's a place called the uh, Iyokwe River, right? Um, there's another water body called Orobo River. These are major water bodies that have the potential to actually add almost 60,000 cubic meters of water supply to the city of Enugu. But all of these opportunities have been ignored. In fact, understandably, even the ones, the existing ones, the government has the other, and the ruling party have showed a remarkable inability, remarkable incompetence in even just using the existing water infrastructure. But I make that reference to tell you that one is fully aware of those opportunities and all of those opportunities will be exploited. Now to something else that is critical, talking about rural development. You have a phone with you? Please Google very quickly the role and the mandate of local governments in the Nigerian constitution. Not many of you realize, not many of you realize the critical importance of local governments in a democracy, in any nation. They have such great responsibility. They are the ones closest to the people. It is their responsibility to build roads. Waste management is their responsibility. Management of markets is their responsibility. Management of parks is their responsibility. Sanitation is their responsibility. And I can go on and on. Check your phones and see. My approach will be to make sure that we have only the most credible, competent people in our local government system. Nobody under my government will bring bags of money to me in government house. No. The monies are meant for local governments, are meant for the development of the rural areas, are meant for the benefit of our people in those, in that, uh, in, in those communities. I will ensure, as governor, that monies meant for local governments are applied for local governments. No more, no right. less. So if we do have any other questions in the hall, uh, please let's take them. But there's also another one here um, that is asking about your plans for improving revenue that's been collected here in the States. No, say that again. What's your plan for improving the internally generated revenue of Enugu States? Very well. Okay, thank you. So you want to ask yourself, what are the components of revenue generation? I'm also interested in even the use of the existing revenue that is collected in this state today. And what are these? You have the well-known monthly allocations from Abuja. It's there. You also have, and I can tell you that in the last uh, six years of the current administration, uh, I think the total FAC allocations has come to about 60 billion or thereabout. And in terms of internally generated revenue over the last uh, five or six years, at least up to 2021, has been about uh, 300 and, um, over about 320 billion uh, naira. Now, the question is, what have we done with these monies? Okay? I believe that if it is possible for you to really be accountable and for people to see what you're doing with revenues, then it will create great opportunity for you to expand the generation of that revenue, right? If you look at what's been happening with, say, with the waste sector, the fact that services are not being rendered completely undermines your ability to ask people to pay for, revenue, uh, for, 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 for refuse management. 
Okay? You also look at our tax base, for instance. Our tax base is so narrow. It's so very narrow. But a more important problem is the following. You find that markets and parks are located to individuals. And parks are located for individuals. So the bulk of the monies paid by our people are diverted, diverted into private pockets. And then even when the monies have come to the central collection point, the management of, those, of that revenue is also compromised significantly. What I'd like to say to the people of Enugu is the following, that I will bring the greatest discipline to the management of every resource. Tax collection will be completely digitized. So we need to try and eliminate the opportunity for people to collect monies by hand from anybody at any time. That is one way to begin to deal with these issues of revenue management. And let me tell you something else. The issue of uh, cost efficiencies is critical. The fact that contracts are regularly inflated, we know these things. These things are there. When you look at some project and you ask and you see, 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 see the quality of this project, you calculate the value creation and all of that, you find that this, this is a complete scam. So we are going to eliminate all of these wastes. We're going to eliminate this corruption. Now, the last but not the least is, I'll, I'll share something that will shock you. And in order to do this, I'm going to, I'll need to get some documents I prepared for this debate or for this town hall meeting. And that is the issue of revenue allocation. And just permit me to share something with this audience. And that is... In order for you to fully understand when I talk about revenue management, revenue allocation, just so that you understand and get some perspective on it. In the year, in the 2022 budget, I have identified certain critical subheads or sectors. And I'd like to share with you what the revenue allocation to those sectors are. Let us look at water. In the 2022 budget, the sum of 10.3 billion naira is what was budgeted for the water sector. Education, the sum of 14.47 was budgeted for the education sector. Youth and sports, four. 0.2 billion naira. For science and technology, approximately 600 million naira was allocated. But hold on. For the governor's office, for the governor's office, 17.7 billion naira was allocated to the governor's office. So is it any surprise why our state is where it is? Is it any surprise why we don't have water? Is it of any surprise why the technology sector is so underdeveloped? Why so, our people are not getting the support they require? And I can share with you, you know, through the years, the various allocations so, so, so the, on this question. So, so the question then becomes, with all of these numbers, right? Yes. With, with, with all of these numbers, yes. what does your presence in governance okay. mean for you know, helping these people make sense of what you've just read out. Very good. So my presence in government, you can see that for me, I spend my waking hours contemplating these issues. These are the data that are available out there. You get on budget, you find it. You go to the National Bureau of Statistics, you find these things. Any person who aspires to be your governor, who is not at home with these figures, who is not at home with the fiscal condition of our state, the fiscal condition of our nation, the fiscal conditions of the world she has no business trying to be your governor okay. because it is going to be a very, very challenging time. Now, what you can see from what I've just shared with you is the fact that the ruling party is not concerned about the people. That is what this data just shows you. My government will be about the people. My government will be about the youth. My government will be about our mothers and our women. My government will be about the rural communities. My government will be about the citizens of our state. 
Not about okay. me. Not about bureaucracy. Okay. Not about my cronies. So, not about my friends. Not about my associates. But about the people of Enugu State. I, I, and I that think, is what my government will be. That is what the, that's the difference I'm bringing to the table. And I think this is and I think this is a great place to end the conversation. Now, remember, we're broadcasting live on television, so um, our time is really limited. Uh, but I want to say thank you very much for joining us this evening, Mr. Frank Nemekanweke Jr. is the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Grand Alliance Abga. In just a moment, we'll be joined on stage by the candidates of the other parties here present uh, for a final thank you. So stay with us. This is not done yet. You're watching the candidates reaching you live.